You know where you are? is Appetite for Distortion. Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion, episode number 406. My name is Brando. Coming up, Mr. Stephen Piercy of Rat. Uh, episode, the interview is a few weeks old. Yeah, I, I usually don't like to do that, even though it's a pre-recorded podcast. You know that I want it to feel like live radio because that's my background. And it, it makes me feel that you're there with me. But having a two-month-old and scheduling these fan reviews, which have been so great to do, Hyde Park and Glastonbury and Glasgow. And I wanted to take some time with the Geezer Butler interview and the Steve Turner from Mudhoney interview. Let those breathe. I don't like to put out so many interviews at once because, I don't know, I like to let it breathe. I don't want to overload you, but I think it's long enough. So without further ado, Mr. Stephen Piercy of Rat. Welcome, Mr. Stephen Piercy. How are you, sir? I'm great. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> Where in the world are you? Uh, I'm in Las Vegas. Okay. Oh, uh, did you uh, celebrate the uh, the Stanley Cup last night? The victory by the uh, the Golden Knights in Vegas. Oh, I'm sure my buddy will. He owns a he owns the building. He just built it just for them. Well, he, he must. Be- I didn't know. I knew it was going down. I you know I actually played hockey when I was a kid, but I got tired of getting up early, getting my ass punched around <laughs> and quite the opposite you, you get instead of getting up early you stay up late all night rock and rolling and that's what we're you know talking about with the 40th anniversary uh box set which is so cool for us uh rat fans and i guess because you got like the the surviving members of, of rat to put this together how hard or easy was that to do because i know there's no reunion in the cards you mentioned that but to get all the guys as much as you can to put this together was it easy or difficult it was uh, pretty much they approached uh you know a couple of us and then you know it just went out hey we need some photos who wants to put their two cents in and that was about it. I mean, I'm I at least, you know, we got a couple of the guys off their ass to do that, you know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad that it's happening. And, you know, some things always, I, I always wonder when people put these box sets together, and help, maybe you can help me answer this. When they put together, because one of the, the cool things that's involved is the um, replica tour book with some never-before-seen photos. So when, Yeah, that's where, that's where everybody got involved. And it was, you know, and I put in what I gave a bunch of personal photos from our, all my archives. I got thousands of photos that, you know, I thought Robin would like. I picked a, a bunch and, and uh, so did everybody else or had somebody do it for him. And, and that's that. When you look back, because I can't even look at a picture of myself today, let alone the 80s. But when you look back at photos of you in the 80s, do you, are you like, yeah, I was the man back then? Or you're like, oh, I can't believe I wore that. Like, how do you look yeah, at it? Well, I think it's kind of cool. That, yeah, and it's way cool that, that you know, that, <laughs> that we took these chances. I mean, look, I, I think we said, a, you know, a couple of the, the OGs of the real Sunset Strip experience, which I call it. You know, I think we set a standard, and 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 then everybody else kind of just followed along, you know, and, and and had the same wardrobe people, the same video directors, the same this, the same that. Like, you know, they're successful; they did it. Why don't we do it? You know. <laughs> but I I think it's fun because it took balls for some of us to 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 put on those, you know. I mean, other people to other groups and stuff, they were like kind of costumes, costumes for us. It was like we had no no money. So we <laughs> we had to just kind of scrape together whatever, like I'm going to 
like Robert Plant wearing his sister's little, little sister's shirt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, all organic and just, you know, hand-me-downs. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, I, I, I love that. Um, who would you pick? Because you mentioned the, the OGs of the Sunset Strip. You know, a few years ago, they had the the big four, Metallica, like as far as thrash, Metallica, Megadeths, uh, Slayer, and Anthrax. Who would you pick as the big four of the Sunset Strip? If that were ever to happen as a tour or just in general, who would you pick on your Mount Rushmore? Well, you know, it, it's interesting you, you ask that because, you know, I've cre- created and been working on this uh, uh, thing we're calling the Sunset Strip Experience, which I'm introducing this year and actually going to tour next year and be it with uh, one a member from one of the OGs back then or you know, the groups, because there's not many original groups even around anymore with all original members. But, you know, it it was bands like, you know, Motley, Rat, Wasp, uh, even a band called White Sister, uh, who never really did it, you know, huge on the strip at the moment at that time. Uh, you know, Great White was called Dante Fox. Even Striper was part of that. They were called Rock's Regime. Uh, you know, of course, Quiet Riot. And, you know, it was the bro. Um, it, yeah, it was only really a handful. It wasn't all these these Muppet heads who came into the strip from Pennsylvania or, <laughs> you know, uh, Seattle or somewhere. Sure. And said it's happening there. I knew it was going to go down when I met Ed Van Halen in '78. I went, something's about to crack here, and and I was living in San Diego at the time. And a friend of mine kept trying to get me to L.A. to see this band called Van Halen play Gazaris, and and then eventually. He said, they're playing the uh, whiskey now. You got to go see him. And I went, man, I got to get up there and see this band. And I did. I drove myself up, waited backstage till I saw somebody from the band I recognized. And and I got in and, and made a beeline right backstage to look for Ed Van Halen, this guitar player guy, and became friends. And I I'm and and then from then on, I always went up to L.A. to see them. And then he kind of said, you know, you guys got you know, you to get up to L.A. And that's what I did January 1, 1980. I went, here we go. Who's coming? You know. <laughs> here, we, here we go. Uh, one last question, because I know uh, you have a ton of interviews today to talk about the box set. Sure. But, oh, yeah, the box set. Yes, yes. Uh, but last time you were on, I'm sure you don't remember, you told me a great story about how Steven Adler gave you the GNR demo tape and how you are still buddies. And it was so cool to see both of you take a picture together recently. I think it was, yeah. uh, what, what did you talk about with Steven? What did you catch up on? And did you talk? Yeah, I guess did you can share any of that. Yeah, you know, uh, we did a show recently, and then we have another one coming up. Uh, um, you know, we just met about the same thing, exactly. Like, wow, can you believe that we're still first alive? Uh, uh-huh. Number two, that <laughs> number two, that you know, uh, all the all the stuff you know the, the that we've gone through. Uh, to this day and yeah it's true man you know i we became kind of friends way back then same kind of thing you know uh, when i come off the road somebody you know it would be like oh you gotta go you know check this band out and i did i became friends with stevie and and he'd come by and next thing you know we're hanging out he comes by brings me the cassette saying oh this record's fa- record's finally done i listened to the cassette and i told him i go you guys are going to be fucking huge <laughs> mm. well steven uh thank you so much for your time thank you brother yeah you got it just congratulations and i hope we get to do this again yeah man the box set's amazing another truth be told other than this interview being a few weeks old i'm kind of was cut short with an interview no fault of steven well he was late to the interview which is fine it happens i think i guess four minutes late technically 
and I was the first person on these radio tours that I was told you about. So after me, he had an interview with like 15 other uh, radio shows across the country. And I, again, I'm lucky to get involved in these because sometimes I do these tours. I edit them as part of my job. And, well, I have this podcast, too, so I can get interviews at times. So since he was late, my wonderful coworker, <laughs> no fault of his, I mean, I get the stress on the other end doing it. He's like, uh, since he's late, you got six minutes to catch him up on time. Now, the interview was supposed to be 10. I was a bad boy, and I pushed it to eight. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know he was going to give such a long answer to that Mount Rushmore thing. And I only got to ask one thing about the box set, which you really should check out. I had a whole question set up. And I'm glad he, he set me up for it. He said the, the phrase, way cool. I wanted to talk about way cool junior in the, in the history of that song, one of my favorite rat songs. So hopefully next time. Uh, but Maybe you didn't even notice. This was a fun interview for most of you, but I had to also get in a Guns N' Roses question. And I wanted to follow up about how do you feel about Steven not being in the band now. There was more I wanted to get out. So hopefully we can get Steven Piercy back on for a third time. But nevertheless, it was fun. And I'm very uh, privileged and honored to get any time with uh, with Steven Piercy, Rat, such a, a great and classic band. And we're going to make this a short episode today because the last two, the fan reviews, have been pretty long. So I like to do a mix, sometimes throughout a short episode, sometimes a long. I don't know. Let me know what you prefer. Sometimes you just like that quick pop in, like I have a drive, I have some errands to run, I want to listen. And sometimes you're just, hey, I, I want to kill a whole day. I've been catching up on episodes, you know, multiple ones. So I guess it all adds up to a lot in the end, that was especially since we're into the uh, the 400s now, and and something tells me we're gonna have a lot, lot to talk about, which we are with Guns N' Roses currently on tour, still rehearsing, perhaps without Axel. Okay, we're still getting those sound checks of perhaps. I guess this could be GNR news, shotgun news, news. One of these days, I want to set up like a soundboard. Yeah, I have my new studio set up in my new apartment, but it's still not up to where I would like it to be. Uh, we'll see. That's, that's another conversation for another time. So more fan reviews. I'm still getting requests uh, to come on the show. Just um, let me know as soon as you're like, oh, no, I want to do this, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. Uh, let me know, and then you're going to have to remind me <laughs> again when the show gets closer because, again, with a two-month-old, I'm lucky I can remember yesterday. It's a two. Though it's, I appreciate all of the, those of you who are reaching out saying, "I know what it's like. I know what it's like. It's gonna go by so fast." I appreciate this time. I do. I do. I appreciate the Mister, uh, the little baby brownstone, the little nugget. But I'm not gonna miss this screaming if he doesn't get his bottle on time. And, and and the show that Guns N' Roses nerddom that is in my blood before the whole podcast thing, every time he's just like screaming. And then as soon as the uh, the nipple hits his mouth, he just stops and starts sucking away. And in my head, I'm thinking Axel going, suck on that. <laughs> I am out of my fucking mind. Uh, but there could be also more news because a few of you, and I really do appreciate all of you who send me news or memes or just try to give me material you're all my producers you really are especially on, on, on social media and well when i have a guest with the questions you ask you're all my uh, producers so duff as i'm recording this so i'm recording this because yes the interview is a few weeks old but i'm recording this july 5th yeah we're in july already uh duff did an interview with the German uh, magazine ClassicRock.net, and toward the end, you know, they were kind of just like nonchalantly just asking him about the crowds. Uh, thanks. So I'm going to give a shout out to Oliver, who who sent me this. That most of the interview is just you know like a typical interview, but towards the end of the conversation, he nonchalantly dropped the following sentence. Again, translated from German. There will soon be news from Guns N' Roses. I think even this week. I don't know what that means. News could be anything. News could be a new toy truck. I doubt it. I don't know why Duff would phrase it that way. So 
As I'm putting this out today, July 5th, we'll see. Will anything happen by, I guess, the 8th? By Saturday? I don't know. It, I, and since they are sound checking, perhaps, and I don't think it's some giant troll, let's, let's rehearse this song just to fuck with the diehard fans. No, no, no. My guess is that they're rehearsing it, and, and sorry to all my friends abroad, I think they're saving it for North America. I, that's my guess. I think once they start the dates here in the States, that's when we will get perhaps, and perhaps, another tune. Or perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps <laughs> it's the peewee word of the day. Ah, that maybe it'll come out this week. And everything I'm talking about now will be old hat by the time the week is over. So we shall see. A lot going on in the Guns N' Roses world. And, and also let me say this while I have your ear. A lot of articles about Axel falling down. Enough already. It's not funny. And I think some of the, the online magazines follow me. Well, I know some of them follow me. Since I made a tweet about that, because as a handicapped person, I'm currently sitting in my wheelchair that I'm now using as my desk chair. It's not funny when people fall. Yeah, Dick Van Dyke back in the day over the, the Ottoman or Homer Simpson falling. And sometimes, you know what? Maybe it's an asshole that just deserves it. I, I love the jackass stuff. In the right context, it's funny. I just don't think, you know, a guy who's out there has broken his leg before. And and all the slings and arrows that, that Axel has gotten over the years, I just don't think it's funny anymore. I'm not going to be too much of a Debbie Downer. And, uh, you know, maybe you can get a little smirk about it. But, I mean, these articles took it and ran. But you see the article the changing, saying that instead of Axel Falls, they would follow it up. With, oh, he bounced right back up, smiling. Like, they, they, they lessened the blow of the clickbait, I've noticed, since. Oh, and this was actually great, really fun, funny news. Like, you just, just random. And then Slash uh, retweeted it or, or just posted a screen grab of it. Two owl chicks, two female owls, were rescued from the Glastonbury Pyramid stage that they, they were found there, I guess, after Guns N' Roses played. And they were named Axel and Slash. I love that. I think about all the time, whenever I see a video of an owl, I would love to have one as a pet. <laughs> I don't know how realistic or legal that is. They are so freaking cute and just, like, cool looking. They just seem like they would be fun. I don't know if they, my cats would like that. So it's, it's really awesome. And we know what a... Um, you know, a, a, a voice slashes for, for animals with all the works. Uh, and, and Guns N' Roses in general, too, uh, throughout the years. So I'm sure he got a kick out of that story. And hopefully you did, too. It's on my social media. So conversation always in, uh, happens in between the broadcasts. Please check it out since there could be Guns N' Roses news any day now. Perhaps. Uh, Facebook.com slash the AFD show. The AFD Podcast on Twitter, Appetite for Distortion on Instagram, on Twitter, the AFD Show uh, at gmail.com. If you would like to send a message or have a guest suggestion, whatever it is, open communication between me and you as we have fun here on Appetite for Distortion. When is the next episode? Who is the guest going to be? What is the review going to be? I don't know right now. So we will all see together. When are you going to see that episode? Well, I know this. In the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know if soon is the word, but you'll see it. <laughs>